Hello and welcome back to another CodePro tutorial. In today's tutorial, we are going to be diving into the published subscriber, also known as the PubSub design pattern through Notification Center. So if you've ever been in a scenario where you've needed to listen for some kind of event in your app or some kind of global notification, uh, then this is what you're going to want to employ. Um, and we're gonna cover how to use Notification Center, how to post or publish notifications, and then how to add observers to listen for notifications and respond, such as updating the user interface or various events like that. If you're a new iOS developer just getting started, make sure you check out my iOS Development Fundamentals course, available on both Skillshare and on Udemy. This course is great for beginner developers. It'll teach you the fundamental skills needed to become a great iOS developer. Also, make sure to check out my channel on Patreon, you can support me there if you like this content and it really helps the channel out. And I will be posting more premium content over on my Patreon channel, so definitely check it out there. But let's open up Xcode and get started with this tutorial. So let's go ahead and get started in a new project. So what we're gonna wanna do is go to our storyboard and we're gonna add a couple of view controllers so that we can set up a kind of a pub sub or a publish subscribe uh, pattern where one of our view controllers can post a notification and other view controllers that are listening for the notification um, can receive it and respond to um, the notification that's being broadcast. So let's just start by, um, what we can do here is add in a tab controller. And we'll do editor embed in a tab bar controller. And what we'll do here is create maybe two more view controllers and we'll make them child elements of the tab controller. So if we go back over to the tab bar controller, if you hold down the control key, we can drag over. And what we want to do is go to this relationship segue view controllers. And we'll also do the same thing for the third view controller. So hold the control key and uh, click and drag, and then we'll do a relationship segue for view controllers. So uh, we're going to have three view controllers, and uh, one of them is going to publish notifications, the other two are going to listen and we'll see about passing data uh, from one to the other and then updating the interface with uh, something that we send through the notification. So let's go ahead and differentiate our view controllers here. So I'm just gonna go ahead and give each view just a different color um, so we can kind of visually see what's going on when we are um, transitioning between the view controllers. And the view here will change to a different color and uh, we'll do the same for the third one here too. So now let's go ahead and uh, subclass everything so we can hook all of this up. So I'll start with my first view controller here and I believe this is the default one. So this is the view controller that comes in the project. So this is gonna be our publisher. This is gonna be what posts or publishes notifications. Uh, these are gonna be the subscribers. They're going to listen for the notifications and do something if they receive them. So what we'll do here is create a new uh, view controller for each one of these. So we'll just do a Cocoa Touch class. We'll just call view controller two. And we'll do view controller three for the blue one down here. File, new file, Cocoa Touch class, and we'll call this. Uh, view controller three. Okay, so we'll go back to the storyboard here and just cook up the uh, subclass. So uh, this one will be view controller two. So we'll go to the class inspector and set view controller two. And we'll do the same thing for this one, view controller three. And we're good to go. So let's go into our first view controller and uh, actually publish something from here. So it's really easy to post a notification. Uh, it's actually, you can do it in almost one line of code. So it looks like this, notification center, notification center dot default to use the singleton instance and dot post. And now, so we have a few options here. We can post a notification. We can post a notification name and an object, which is of type any. Uh, we can also post 
a name, an object, or user info. Uh, usually a lot of the times you'll see this, um, th this one being used more. And a dictionary is typically passed into the user info, uh, which you can use to send data back and forth. So let's go ahead and um, try, try this offer size first. So we'll just post a notification uh, with not sending anything except just posting it and making sure that the other view controllers can see it. So let's go ahead and do a... Um, so for the object, we'll pass in nil. And for the user info, we'll pass in nil. We'll come back and fill that in later on. So for the name, uh, we'll just pass in uh, something relevant. So publish event call view controller publish view controller publish event. Now in your app, you'll want to give it a more meaningful name. It has to correspond to an event that has value or something significant. So um, what we can do here is just go ahead and fix it with the suggestion because um, I can never remember that. I let Xcode rem remember that for me. For the object, we'll pass in nil. And for user info, we'll pass in nil. Now we can also, we can tie, we can create one of these directly uh, with, that's probably a better idea. So what we can do is just extract this out. We'll go up top here and just create it in a constant. And we'll just post it like that. So that way, you don't have to type it anywhere else. Now, um, rather than publish this in muted load, let's do it inside of an event like a button click. So let's go back to the storyboard and just drag a button onto the view controller. We'll just call this uh, post and publish notification. And let's go ahead and hook up the action for that. So go into the split editor here, get our view controller, if we can find it in here. And we can just command click and drag over to create the action. Publish, we'll, call it, we'll name it publish notification like that. And what we'll do then is we're going to put that code inside the button click. So we'll go back to our view controller again here and cut that and paste it here. And so that's it. It's that simple. Uh, that's how you can post a notification from anywhere. Now let's go ahead and hook up the other two view controllers to listen for this notification. So for the sake of reuse, um, what we want to do is take this notification and put it somewhere that the other view controllers um, can subscribe to it. So not subscribe to it, but, but it's not living inside of the view controller is a better way to phrase this. So I'm going to create a new class and it's just going to be called notifications. You can kind of think of it like a constants class, but it's just going to contain the only notifications. And we'll just call it class notifications. And the notification will be, we'll cut it out from here, from view controller, paste it into notifications.swift. We're going to change it from being private to being internal, which is the default um, if we don't specify internal. And I'm just going to make it static uh, just so I don't have to have an instance of this class. I just simply want to. I use it only for uh, one purpose only. And uh, so what we'll do here is rename this. We'll just call it uh, view controller publish event or publish notification, right? It makes more sense. And then back in our view controller, we're going to update here to be listening for the notifications. dot view controller publish notification. So that's what we publish. Let's build it and make sure everything compiles. I believe I have a typo. Two eyes. 
uh, notifications. Okay, built again, and we're good to go. So now what we want to do is go into View Controller 2. And it's good to know the uh, view lifecycle methods in here because if we print view did load was called, and let's say something like view will appear, you'll see what I mean in a second here. So I want to just print these out just so we can kind of understand uh, how this works inside of a tabbed interface, but really in view did load is where we want to subscribe for, uh, for our notification. So what we'll do here is in view controller 2, we'll do notification center dot default for the singleton access dot add observer. And so what we're going to be observing, uh, we're, we're going to, we're going to be Who's going to be the observer? Self is going to be the observer, which is view controller two in this context. So we use self to, to, to denote that. The selector is going to be the method that is called. So I can create a function like this, notification. The notification has been received in view controller two, right? Something like that. And uh, what we can then do is print user info, and that'll be nil until we send something through. But so that so we can print it here, and the selector is going to point to this notification received. So it's going to be hashtag selector. notification received. The name is going to be the notification that we just put in that notifications file. So it's the one that's being published is the one we need to listen for. So notifications dot view controller publish notification. And the object I'm just going to pass in nil for right now. Uh, it's not something we care about. So let's go ahead and run this real fast. And just uh, we can we can kind of see what's going on here from the simulator. Yeah, let me see here. Oh yeah, you have to add the at objc. Uh, to, th there's a compatibility reason for why this has to be exposed, so they can properly work in Objective C. And Xcode is going to force you to prepend at objc in front of your notification received handler. So let's go ahead and run this. Now, if we publish right now, nothing is going to happen because our view has not subscribed, right? So if we put breakpoints inside of our three spots in here, and I hit publish, nothing happens. Now, the moment I go into view controller two, we add the observer, we view will appear as called, and we're listening. So now if I go back to publish to view controller one and back into view controller two, you'll see that view did load was not called again. View will appear was called. And this is where you have to be careful. We don't want to continuously add observers over and over and over if we had mistakenly put this code in view will appear. We, so well, we, we want to basically do one of two things. If we know view did load is going to ever be called one time and we don't care to unsubscribe, we can put this in view did load and it's harmless. But if view will appear uh, is when we care to subscribe and we want to unsubscribe when the view re uh, disappears, then we have to put the add observer code here and then in view will disappear, we have to unsubscribe. So I'll show you what that looks like in a minute here, but let's go ahead and now that we're listening, publish the notification. And you can see that the notification was received in view controller two. And uh, we're gonna print nil for user info because we don't have anything yet. So how would we unsubscribe? Well, uh, we can do it like this. So view will disappear. Super view will disappear. That default. That remove observer self. Now that's going to remove you from all notifications. 
but you can unsubscribe to individual notifications, right? You can do dot remove an observer and so you can just specify the notification that you want to unsubscribe from. Now in a tabbed uh, interface like this, it doesn't make much sense because we have to go to the other view to publish anything. So if this view disappears and we go to the other view and publish, well then we're not listening again um, because we just uns we just uh, unsubscribed. So, uh, but that's how you do it if you had to do it. It's just, it doesn't make sense to do, to do that in this context. Um, so it's pretty simple to do as you just saw there. Now let's go into view controller three and do the same thing. We're gonna subscribe for our events. So go into uh, view controller three. And what we'll do here is add the observer. So we'll do notification received in view controller three. And uh, what we'll do here is actually subscribe like this. And now we're, we're all set. We're listening, we're subscribed in both at the same time here. Um, and so we've, we've seen that we can send notifications already, right? So we, we, how do we pass data through? That's the next challenge we're gonna tackle. So if we go back to view controller, or our view controller one, let's start by sending something through user info, like a dictionary. So for example, um, we can do something like this. So I can pass in a really simple key value pair uh, like this, right? And let's go ahead and publish this and see what we get in our console log. And so we want to make sure that we're subscribed. We'll go ahead and remove these breakpoints. Just disable everything for now. And subscribe in view controller three. And now let's go ahead and publish. And so we can see here in the console log that the notification has been received in view controller two and the notification has been received in view controller three and it's printing the data here. So that's pretty cool. So that's how we can pass data through. Um, and I can show you how we can, how that would work if it was bound up to a, a user interface. So like, let me throw a label on the view controllers. So what I went ahead and did was added some labels and um, each view controller, view controller two and three have the labels hooked up already. And I have a IB outlet uh, connecting them. So what I want to do is in the notification handler, we'll do the same thing, but we'll bind it. So what we can do here is rather than printing the user info, we can check for it. So if let user info payload equals notification dot user info, we can do um, display label dot text equals user info payload for the key channel. That's just the channel that I happen to be, or the key that I happen to be passing through. Um, we'll optionally cast that as a string uh, because text is an optional, so that's gonna be fine if for whatever reason something blew up or it was nil. Um, so we'll go ahead and copy this code and we'll drop it right into view controller three as well. It's the exact same thing. And let's go ahead and run this in the simulator and see what it looks like. So we'll go ahead and subscribe. And this is just the regular text before I added anything or published anything and then we publish. And we go back and you can see that the uh, labels are updated to Code Pro because um, we we were able to extract uh, the payload that was passed and get the string from the dictionary and then bind it to the text. Now, I also wanna look at one final use case here uh, and that is when we want to pass something through as an object, right? So um, we'll go ahead and just create a, create a class up top here. I guess we can create a new class just to do a new file. So we'll do a new Swift class here and we'll just do something like uh, notification payload. Now uh, we'll call this and 
And we'll initialize it with a um, with payload. Like that. And it's, it's really simple. It's just going to be uh, just a container, basically, to pass something through. Now, we'll go back to view controller uh, one here. And uh, what we'll do here is instead of user info, uh, we'll send nil for user info. And let me just build my project so Xcode can find the class. And we'll just call this um, a new instance of notification payload. And we'll pass in the same value, code pro, uh, code pro channel, like that. And so that's just an instance. Now this could be anything. It could be a different uh, instance of a different class. Um, it could be whatever you want it to be because the type is defined as any. So let's go ahead and go back to view controller two and just update it here. So notification that object, so we can do here. We can cast that as a notification payload. Dot text equals notification payload dot payload string. And uh, I can just comment out, it doesn't matter because it's going to be past nil for anyways, but just copy this and go into view controller three. Comment it out the user info and do the exact same thing here. And now let's go ahead and run this. And go ahead and subscribe. So everything's set to the default state of just label text. Let's go ahead and publish. And then let's go back and you can see code pro channel uh, is what's coming back here. So it's just a different way of sending data. Um, you can send an instance of a class through, you can send a dictionary through, um, it all works the same, you just have to process it differently on the receiving side. So now the next question is when should you use notifications as opposed to other patterns, uh, maybe such as delegation or uh, using, uh, complete using closures or blocks. Um, when is the best time really to use a publish subscriber pattern uh, like Notification Center? So notifications work best in a one-to-many scenario, where there may be one global event that could happen at any time in the app that other things need to respond to in the app if that event were to be broadcast. So if that event happened and it published a notification, then anywhere in your app, no matter how decoupled it may be, that needs to be aware of that event can subscribe for it and then respond appropriately when the uh, notification is received. Now, uh, if we're going to use uh, delegation, it's not really going to work because delegation works most in a one-to-one -one scenario uh, where there's kind of a direct communication chain uh, between the two objects uh, where one object is delegating responsibility to another object. Um, it, there's kind of a back and forth communication that can occur. But with notifications, um, it's unidirectional. It's 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 one way. You're you're posting a notification and something listens to it and responds, or the notification gets posted and no one responds if no one's listening. Um, so so that's just one thing to consider. In a one-to-many scenario, notifications may make sense, but you don't want to abuse them. Um, another problem you might run into is if the name of the notification changes and you don't update your observers for that change, uh, you could run into problems. Uh, there's no contract uh, defined in, in a protocol like you would get with a delegate. Um, so that would kind of protect you if there was a compile time error, such as uh, a delegate method was made optional uh, versus mandatory. You're going to know about that right away uh, when you compile your code. But with notifications, it's a little less obvious and it's a little bit harder to debug uh, when you run into problems with notifications than with delegation. But if you remember anything, the key differentiator is in a one-to-many scenario, notifications make sense, and that's probably when they're the most appropriate to use in your app uh, code architecture.
And that wraps up this tutorial. If you found this tutorial helpful, let me know. Go ahead and smash that like button and consider subscribing to Code Pro to stay up to date for all the latest tutorials. Make sure to follow Code Pro on Patreon, on Facebook, on Twitter, uh, and on GitHub to stay up to date for all the latest tutorials. Thank you so much for stopping by, and I'll catch you in the next tutorial.